Welcome to the lab. My name's Cory, and in this video, we're gonna be making some fire. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he had mentioned some things that I should add on as details to some of my other projects that I've already made. And I got to thinking that it would probably be a smart move to batch make some bits that I could use on builds going forward. I know I want to have some torches and stuff on the outside of the mausoleum that I'm going to make, but also I made some braziers for the top of that gate that I made last time. But I thought this would be a fun video series maybe to try. If I come up with new ideas for bits to make, I'll, I'll show you how I make them and then I'll make a batch for myself because I don't have a huge bits box collection. I've only do, been doing miniature stuff for about a year now, and uh, I've only put together, out of the vampire stuff I bought for Warhammer, I only put together a couple of boxes so far. I've really got to get on that. And I've got some busts that I bought that I want to paint too. But I really enjoy, as you can tell, the terrain making aspect of things. Um, setting the scene for, for what, what I want to play in. But I thought this might be a good way to get the ball rolling a little faster, so that way I, when I get to building, bigger buildings or projects that I have a bunch of details already made that I can just grab and add on to the thing. And this is one of the things that I know I will need moving forward. So I batch made a bunch of torches and I made a couple of uh, scratch built uh, braziers. Let's get into how I made these and then uh, I'll be back after to talk to you about it. Here are the supplies we're going to be using today. Just some toothpicks, a uh, pair of clippers, knife or scissors would work, and some hot glue. First thing you do is you measure out the size of torch you want. I went with three quarters of an inch. Seems to look right next to models and things. And then I just clip that pointy end off of either side of the toothpick. Most important part of any project, having a good snack to keep you company. And then you do the hot glue. So what I like to do is I put a dab of hot glue so that it surrounds the flat, rounded end of the toothpick and then you blow on it to cool it off as you pull it away to get a sharp tip. And then you just, once it's fully solid, you snap it. And then you give it some texture by going over that a few other times with some more hot glue so that it doesn't look like one just solid raindrop because flames have a bunch of different textures and movements and they look like water so that's how they hang off of the things. My girlfriend actually had a really good idea about the brazier is what I wanted to make. Because um, uh, I was looking for some kind of bowl. So we were walking around Michael's and she pointed out these googly eyes which were really cheap. And came in a bunch of different sizes. And they worked perfectly as like the bowl or pot for uh, the braziers. Then you cut out the backs a little tricky so be very careful when you do this get your knife in there slide it around the edge and then you take out the little eye bit and then you cut out all of the paper or as much of it as you can I got better at this I actually messed up on a couple um, and I threw them away or at least stowed some of the remains for bits for later uh, so it takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too bad once you get it. And then what I did is when I found the center of those things, and I had an extra uh, bin of beads that I found made great bases for these things. And so then I lined them up, and then I used some super glue accelerant and some super glue to make sure that the bases were in the middle as much as possible and then I filled in on the underside, underside of the beads so that they were like really had some adhesion and then I used the same hot glue technique 
for the middle of the braziers. So what you do is you don't want it to pool out too much. You really want the flame to stay in the middle, but be built high. And then you add a bunch of texture like you would from a torch, you just make it bigger. That's all. Maybe have a few different tips and tongues on it. And then uh, the next step I did was prime everything. Which is pretty simple. Uh, I was worried that it wouldn't stick, but it stuck fine to all the hot glue and the wood and everything. Um, I'm not sure how it'll hold up against roughhousing. But I haven't had any issues yet, so. And then I did the same thing with all of the, the torches that I made, all 35 of them or so. Then I used some uh, black metal, scale 75, and I painted out the base and the bowl of the braziers. Which worked pretty well. Um, I did use white primer, so I had to go over it a couple times to really make sure that none of the white showed through. I didn't like that. Probably should have used black, but I wanted to use white for the flame. And so instead of going over it with a couple of different colors, I just did it once. Then I base coated the flame with yellow. And then after that, you kind of inverse your shading. You use the darker colors on the uh, further, the bits that are further away from the center of the heat of the flame, uh, around the edges, and then you blend all that together like you normally would for, for shading. So, you know, you blend from the yellow to the orange and then the orange to the red. And then the best thing you want to do by keeping all the crevices as bright as possible, um, when you get to the very tips, add on a dab of black because what happens at the tips of most flames, um, whether you realize it or not, is it starts turning into smoke there. And so that's, it just goes from dark red to a black visually in, in most fire pits that you see. It, you just don't think about it because you're looking at the light and that black part is usually where it starts having the absence of light. But I think it really helps sell it as a flame when you just add the tip of black to it. Went a little heavy on that tip, but <laughs> it worked. And then I used some uh, Woodland Scenics uh, medium ballast. You can use sand or whatever. I just wanted to have some texture. Well, that's how I made all those things. I haven't done the grand reveal yet like I normally do after I finish the project. And that's because we're going to do something a little different this time. I'm just going to show you a close-up of me actually putting these on the gate as a finishing touch for the gate. But I did want to mention why I left all of these torches blank. Now, I probably could have spent a couple hours painting these up, um, and it maybe not even taken me that long. I did a really, really sloppy paint job on these guys, and I still think it looks good enough to be fire. Um, you can spend, you know, you can use a finer brush, or you can spend time getting those blends just right, transitioning from the yellow to the orange to the red but all in all you can just look at this from the distance and it looks like fire what really would sell it as fire is if i did some osl i don't really want to do that on these ones i'm i'm not too confident that i could match the right angles for it so i think i'm going to leave these guys just as is but I left these guys as a blank canvas because I didn't know if I would want to do some kind of magical building in the future or some kind of magical torch that wasn't just your basic red, uh, yellow, and orange for fire. Maybe I'd want a green or a purple or something along those lines to signify that it's kind of some kind of weird necromantic magic or something else. So all I did was prime the top of these and I left the bottoms blank because honestly the, the toothpick will soak up enough paint uh, and I'm just going to slap brown paint on it with a bit of a wash that it'll look fine. Uh, I'd rather have them unpainted. As, as easy as it would be to just be like, oh hey, yeah I've got a bunch of flame painted already, I can just tack them onto a building. 
I want to still have the option for options at that point in time uh, rather than just a set type of torch, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm thinking about it too much and I should have just painted them up so that I could get them out and get them ready to go even faster, but I don't know. I think they'll be fine. Okay, this week's crown reveal is a little different. It's actually going to be a little bit more crafting. Uh, there's not much to look at for these things, so I'll quickly show you them and then I'll show you what you can do with them. First thing I'll show you is the torches here. You can see here all the different variety that you can get off of the flames for these torches. Just using hot glue you can get all kinds of different designs. I tend to like them at an angle simply because it makes them look like there's some movement going on, but, you know, the scene is alive. You could have them going straight up if you need be, or however you want to mount these, right? Just think about how a flame would look. Um, but yeah, there's the torches. And then here are the braziers that I made. Oop. You can see the gate that I made last week. We're going to spice this up a little bit, just slightly. Use a little bit of hot glue, or hot glue, a little bit of super glue. And uh, it's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is take these bad boys and mount them in the middle up here. I'm going to have to stand up for this one. Yeah, that's probably good enough. I'm going to take this. something simple like a stone pillars and give them a little bit of life a little splash of color now I could and maybe will eventually when I get more confident doing OSL paint some uh, light coming off them but they're from the top and it looks like these braziers you know they're more of a signal for where the gate is than anything else but uh, I, I kind of really like what they add to this piece. Just a splash of color. You take here, take this guy. He's not even fully painted, but he's basically who I have out. Put him in next to this gate as comparison. Or even next to one of these guys, you can see how tall they were. Right. A little bit of hot glue, some plastic, some trash. Go a long way. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look into how I made all of these things. And maybe I inspired you to go out and make your own bits to bulk out your own bit collection for things that you would like to make. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button so you can catch my future videos. If you have any other ideas for uh, bits that I can make to bulk out my own bit collection for future fantasy builds, go ahead and drop uh, an idea in the comment section below. I promise you, I read all my comments. Not that I get many yet, but I do read them all, and I'm trying to go through and plan out how to deal with some of them um, during my upcoming builds. 
another thing that I want to do going back and touching up some of my older builds in order to get some more details and color on them is vines. Uh, vines with leaves or whatever on them. If you have any great videos or tips on how to make vines or where to buy good mini model vines to go up walls and stuff, that's something else that I really like your input on. So go ahead and leave a comment on that as well because I, I really could use looking up some of how to do all of that. And until next time, experiment with your hobby. Trip, trip.